In Queensland, the battle against bunnies has raged for decades. But as rabbits again dig in across the southeast, critics say it's way past time for a review. 20 years after the ban on domestic bunnies was last revisited, there are new calls for Queenslanders to be allowed to keep the pests as pets. Cathy McLeish met some already risking the wrath of authorities. <laughs> She's one of an unlikely bunch of lawbreakers. A pet owner willing to risk a run-in with authorities. I've had him for about six years now and he's the best decision I've ever made. He's incredibly affectionate, incredibly fun to have around. He lives in the house, he's litter trained and he's dissexed. But Sally, not her real name or voice, lives in fear of a knock on the door. The implications for him is the biggest worry for me. I would be heartbroken if something happened to him as a result of the laws here in Queensland. Separation or death would be certain. Part of the toughest anti-rabbit regime in the world. The fine and jail term for having a rabbit in Queensland exceeds quite a lot of other violent crimes. It just seems totally unfair that the rest of, of Australia can have domestic pet rabbits, yet Queensland can't. Basically, they're just a bad, bad news story. Alison Shepherd is a lover, not a fighter, but she's found herself heading a protest campaign. I completely underestimated how beautiful these animals were. In Queensland, rabbits are illegal, unless you have a special permit to own one. I thought about becoming a magician, but I realised I didn't have the hand-eye skills and the only thing I could probably do was hide a rabbit. <laughs> As part of a move to Queensland and risking a $44,000 fine, Alison smuggled her bunny across the border. To me, she was my fairy little child with four legs. And when she got here, she found she wasn't alone. Hi. Good morning. Guinea pig food? Yes, please. OK. I would have to say in the thousands, and I don't think that's exaggerating. We know in our little uh, area here how often people come in and, and indicate that they're after something for a rabbit. Thank you very much, ma'am. I had plenty of access to food and toys for her. Um, I also found a vet who would look after long-eared guinea pigs to give her her annual vaccinations. They agreed as long as she was de-sexed and microchipped, they would keep her under her care. But eventually her rabbit got sick on a weekend and when no other vet would help, her pet died. Now she wants the laws changed. Yeah, I am petitioning the government to allow a de-sex, domesticated, microchipped pet rabbit and allow us Queenslanders the, the choice to own a rabbit as a pet. Well, we're out of step with the rest of the world, actually. Paul Westaway says Queensland is the only place on the planet where it's illegal to keep domestic rabbits. He heads the Pet Industry Association in Queensland, an organisation that's been lobbying the government for decades. The amount of time and effort put into this uh, and the lack of uh, result is scandalous. He says a market in pet rabbits would be a boon for the industry which could manage permits. We've proved as an industry that we can handle any sort of regulation or record keeping, whatever is required. But there's not a lot of difference in wanting to have a pet cane toad, for example. You know, both species have had dramatic environmental impacts on Australian ecology, and yet because the rabbit's cute, it's, people have a desire to keep. Memories of rabbit plagues may have dimmed since the introduction of myxomatosis in 1950 and Khaleesi virus in the 1990s, but not everyone has forgotten the terrible toll. And maybe you go chasing rabbits. The Darling Downs Morton Rabbit Board, the last of its kind in the country, is still holding the line. Rabbit. Fences used to extend across southern Queensland. Um, this is the last surviving one, and I'm told that this one was kept because it was seen to be effective. And yeah, I think a lot of people forget that this fence has provided them of more than 100 years of no rabbit activity or low rabbit activity. So it, it has worked. 
Will Dobby works with landholders to eradicate rabbits within the board's 555 kilometres of rabbit-proof fence, which runs from Mount Gipps near Rathdowney to Miles, where it joins up with the wild dog barrier, protecting important farming regions, including the Lockyer Valley. That's where the financial loss to rabbits could be greatest. It's very important food-wise that we protect uh, the small cropping areas of our uh, controlled area. The rabbit board and the fence are funded by eight neighbouring local councils. Ipswich City is one of them, but it has a rabbit problem. We're just not getting uh, a bang for our buck, it's as simple as that. And I think that whole rabbit board needs a review and investigation. Ipswich councillors say the city's shelling out for a share of the fence and its own eradication costs as well. They want areas like Brisbane to chip in. I think that uh, there needs to be a full review into the worthiness of the fence. Uh, it just doesn't seem to be working. Uh, we have rabbits throughout southern Queensland and uh, in pockets in other places in Queensland. It's not working. The rabbit has bolted. Maintaining the fence is constant work. The Rabbit Board operates on a budget of around $1.5 million a year. But with that, it says it can hold the rabbits back on that side of the fence and manage and control their numbers on this side. But now there are serious concerns that without a significant injection of funds and focus, the Rabbit Board could be overrun. The immediate threat is from King Arroy. Rabbits now are quite widespread in Queensland. The Rabbit Board now is facing a different issue of rabbits entering not from the south, from New South Wales, where the threat was originally seen to come from, but, but from the north, where there is no physical barrier. But in Ipswich, they reckon both the fence and the ban on bunnies have had their day. I think it's time we re revisited the whole issue of rabbits, the wild rabbits and the pet rabbits issue in Queensland. Western Australia dropped its domestic rabbit ban because there was little evidence they could live in the wild. But the Rabbit Board says history shows they're survivors. Sometimes all the best studies can be found wrong. Uh, I wouldn't be going to take the risk as a landholder and a producer, and uh, I don't believe it would be fair to all our producers to all of a sudden open the floodgates and let pet rabbits into Queensland. A domesticated desex rabbit won't cause any harm. The only thing it will do is cause a lot of happiness and love from the people that own it, and um, they'll be actually um, really surprised at how much a love a rabbit can give. And the government says it won't be reviewing the rabbit ban, but there will be a review of how the rabbit board is funded.